Tonight, the King 5 investigators reveal 10 Hanford workers got sick from unknown gases at the site this summer, yet no official from the nuclear site ever reported it. For years, Hanford has been under a court order to report vapor exposures. The mandate came after years of reporting by the King 5 investigators that showed a pattern of Hanford officials denying dangerous vapors were putting worker health and safety at risk. As Susanna Frame reports, advocates say the recent unreported event, quote, smells like a cover up. Two months ago, a group of 10 Hanford workers were overcome by powerful odors. An internal memo obtained by the King 5 investigators details workers were digging in the TX tank farm. Tank farms store the deadliest toxic waste at Hanford in massive underground tanks. Without warning, the tanks are known to vent poisonous vapors. In the memo, the workers describe the odors as sour, metallic, like a cleaning solution, copper-like and smoky. And symptoms were immediate. They had headaches, chest pain, cough, shortness of breath, dizziness, a metallic taste in the mouth, nausea and stomach issues. Three of the ten were taken to the hospital where they received oxygen and spent the night. So what happened afterward? Not a peep. Nothing. The contractor that runs the tank farms, Washington River Protection Solutions, or WRPS, is under a legal obligation to report vapor exposures. I'm still amazed that not one piece of paper has been put out about this exposure. There's been no announcement. Tom Carpenter is executive director of the advocacy group Hanford Challenge. This silence, you know, is very suspicious. It's like, well, what are you hiding? WRPS tells me they're not hiding anything. They didn't report this event, they say, because they've determined it wasn't vapors, but fumes from a gasoline-powered wheelbarrow like this one that likely made people sick. Ten people getting exposed to unknown gases is bad enough. But here in Hanford, there's a bigger picture concern. Workers and advocates worry the operation is slipping back into a decades-old pattern that's unpredictable and dangerous. In 2014, the King 5 investigators revealed a record number of vapor exposures in the tank farms, eventually involving 56 workers. After each event, WRPS gave the same explanation. They couldn't find anything. They didn't know what hit the workers. And that pattern wasn't new. Expert reports detailed the same cycle in the 80s and then in the 90s, a slew of exposures followed by denials. <laughs> and workers left sick and unable to work. How many exposures do you think you had? I would say dozens. Over 25 years, dozens of exposures. Mike Kane is a 47-year Hanford employee with 25 of those years spent in the tank farms. He's been on the front lines fighting for safer conditions and is all too familiar with what government reports have shown since the 80s. The Department of Energy, which owns Hanford and its contractors, downplaying the seriousness of vapor exposures. Until they are in the field and until they smell what we smell, and until they feel what we feel, and until they get injured like we get injured, they don't care. Hanford is the biggest nuclear waste dump in the U.S. The mission is clean up only after 40 years of producing plutonium for the country's nuclear weapons program. Government scientists have found even short vapor exposures can be extremely dangerous. In the TX tanks, where workers got sick in June, just a few of the contents include plutonium, the radioactive isotopes of americium and strontium-90, mercury, nickel, lead, and cyanide. They want to make it sound as if we're building condos and a golf course next year and, and we're going to have all this wildlife around us and everything's good. When in fact, it's the most contaminated site in the Western Hemisphere and people need to understand that and deal with it. After the string of exposures in 2014, the Washington State Attorney General said, that's enough. This lawsuit is the first time litigation has been brought to protect workers at Hanford. The AG's office, Hanford Challenge, and the union, Local 598, all sued the Department of Energy and WRPS. A legally binding settlement agreement mandates they protect workers with respiratory protection, including, if needed, supplied air like a scuba diver would use. In June, the workers were not wearing supplied air. The contractor had downgraded respiratory protection to respirators, which is cheaper. 
It never should have happened if they were wearing fresh air. Never should have happened. They're not protecting the workers, and they've got a long history of not doing so, of putting money and profits before worker health and safety, and which is ironic because they're all about saying uh, they want to protect health and safety. They're not doing it. A WRPS spokesperson says they're not skimping on safety measures that, quote, the health and safety of the workforce is always paramount. In the Tri-Cities, Susanna Frame, King 5 News.